Hello, leader. In the spa world, your reputation hangs in the balance of every single team member who provides up close and personal services to each client. Choosing the right candidates and then training them is so critical. So on today's episode, I'm featuring a former client who boomeranged back to me to support two of her leadership team members in the team leader program here inside the leadership lab. So let's talk team structure and how to train your team when you have multiple brick and mortar locations and you provide a high level of intimate care services and products. Welcome to the Stacking Your Team podcast. I'm your host, Shelley Warren. I've worked with so many business owners over the years and they all have the same secret to spill when we first meet. They have team troubles. Yes, it's a secret they've been keeping for a long while because most of their peers and family don't believe them. You see, from the outside, everything looks fabulous. They've built a wonderful reputation, a strong following of delighted clients and customers. They've created a brand that resonates with people and the proof is in their revenues. But the truth is they're struggling to lead people and they've pretty much been around the block and back with team turnover. They admit that they're proud of the small business they've built. And yet at the same time, they're so tired of trying to grow without an agile team who are happy to work alongside them. They know that they need a team, but not just any team. And just like you, they're ready to learn how to lead in such a way that fits their perspective as a woman who owns a business, runs a second shift on the home front, and wants to create a legacy for their family and community for years to come. So let's hold hands and jump in together with today's episode. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. Let's start our conversation today with two things. One, I have some live events coming up, so be sure to be the first to hear about them by following along with our weekly newsletter. Go ahead and click the link that's in the episode description to make sure that you're always up to date on what we've got to offer you. And then second, did you know that the team that got you here may not be the team that will get you there? Nikki Janes owns Smooth, a bikini, face, and body waxing spa that uses her exclusive smooth blend and advanced techniques for optimal comfort and results. She and her team are celebrating 10 years and thousands of waxes and millions of smiles. They care for more than 2,000 people each month. Her signature aesthetic is recognizable from the outside through to the inside of her boutiques and treatment rooms with two locations. One is in downtown Norfolk and the other in Virginia Beach. She also offers online shopping experiences for your favorite products. I'm a huge fan of Nikki. I'm always so impressed with how thoughtful she is in showing appreciation for her large team. And I drool over her home and of course her spa boutiques. We've always stayed in touch over the years and recently she enrolled two of her team members in the Leadership Lab Team Leader Program. I can't wait for you to meet her. Welcome to the podcast, Nikki. Hi, Shelly. It's good to see you. I think I told you this before I actually met you that I am a spa junkie. Yes, you told me. (laughs) It's a bit of a hobby of mine. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I love, I just, I love the spa experience and I feel at this point in my life, I am quite the spa critic as well. Mm -hmm. I, Mm -hmm. I feel like I have enough breadth of knowledge that I can, I know when I'm in a, in a high level spa where I feel, whoa, this is, this is going to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. And it always is. And so definitely coming to one of your smooth locations is on my bucket list. And one of these days you're going to see me showing up. I love that. I love it. Yeah. I love to know that people that are really particular come in and I just love to like blow their socks off with the experience. I want them to walk out and go, that was actually more than I expected. So bring it on, baby. (laughs) All right. I'm ready for you. So tell us, how did you suddenly decide 
to, first of all, open up your first spa location? Because it's, it's a unique service that you provide. And I know you've also added on different skincare. It's mm-hmm. all non-toxic skincare that you carry. Sure. So tell me a little bit about the journey. Sure. Um, Well, I had been working as an esthetician for about 10 years. Um, When I, I just felt like I had sort of gotten to the peak of where I could work. I was working in um, probably one of the most well-known spas in our area. Um, And I didn't want to really take on any sort of administrative role there to, to, to shift. And I always had a dream of sort of working for myself and just seeing my clients and spending my days doing what I really loved. And I was about to turn 40 and I said to myself, well, it's kind of either now or never because back and say, I didn't take the chance. I'll never know what would have happened. So that was sort of the catalyst for me to open up, I opened up a, I found a tiny little one room uh, studio where I could just see my clients. The rent was really reasonable. I didn't feel like I was eating ramen noodles for a good six months to a year if I needed to. (laughs) Um, And I just, I just took the plunge. Um, It was sort of the fear of um, regret or not knowing is what really pushed me to do it. So that's what got me to, to open the doors. So you started with a very small Oh yeah. Staff, right. Very small. Roster. I was the only person. I didn't even have a receptionist. So when my clients showed up for their appointment that have to wait outside the locked door for me to finish my current clients so that I could meet them. So it wasn't really an ideal situation for the clients, but my clients were very loyal and they referred a lot of their friends. And then the business just sort of exploded from there. I just couldn't keep the capacity. So how many staff do you have now? Okay, so right now I'm at 23. It's so spectacular to watch a businesswoman impact so many families in your local area by providing a wonderful career opportunity. Honestly, that is by far the thing that keeps me going on the days that I don't think I can handle anymore, knowing that not only have I created good jobs, but I've, I've created jobs that are really well paying so that if something happens to one of my estheticians or if she's going through a divorce or, you know, somebody in the family gets sick, she knows she can handle it on her own without any sort of support. I sort of learned that from personal experiences growing up. Mm -hmm. And that was just something that was always at the forefront for me. um, As I started hiring, I thought, you know, if I can, if I can do this, this is really going to be my, my passion. And, And it has been. Wow, it's such a confidence booster for a woman to know that she can stand on her own and provide for her family if she needs to. Absolutely. And I've seen, you know, I've seen it, the opposite happen and I see how um, it can really tear apart um, a family really quickly. So I just, I wanted to put as much of that out into the world as I possibly could. And I feel like that's what can keep me, keep me going, like I said, on some of the days when I just think I can't. So, well, you are doing it. So, tell me now how you've structured your teams. Yes. So, how are you thinking now about structuring out your team, and what are the bands like? What are the layers that you're okay. that you're folding into that? Um, well, I will say when I when I first started adding team members, there was literally there was no strategy, there was no structure. It was sort of just putting out a fire as quickly as I could. So what I've done now is change the corporate structure so that I'm going to actually have a a parent company that I've already registered Mm -hmm. and um, all of the more executive roles will be within that, that company. So each one of those roles will oversee all three locations. So for example, I'll have an employee experience manager, which will fit into sort of more of that HR type of a role. Mm-hmm. And that way she can oversee all three locations. The operation, director of operations, she'll oversee all of the day-to-day operations for each location. Also, I'm, I'm looking into bringing in a lead esthetician slash trainer to do that. I'm struggling a little bit with that because that is a role that I like to hold on to. So mm-hmm. that's sort of the last one that I'm, I'm trying to sort out. Um, but I, I like it because now I, f- I can already see more consistency between the locations. And I also have to, I'm being held accountable 
because I'm saying, you know, this is what we're actually going to do. And I feel like I have to be held accountable for it. And I have to continue to, to, to keep that uh, continuity going. And you now have this high level layer of support in this executive team that you're creating yes. so that you're a force to be reckoned with now in terms of providing support to your staff at all three locations. Absolutely. You have front desk staff. Yep. And you have statisticians. Yes. Where are you? Uh, it's really interesting because I'd say for the probably the first five or six hires, not the first five or six, but several hires, they were people that I had worked with previously. And just through social circles, the, the word got out to them that I was looking for a front desk person. There were actually, I think, three of the people that I've worked with or who, that worked front deskers. And then from that, they were able to recommend people that they had worked with. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also went the traditional route with hosting jobs on an Indeed and, and that sort of thing. And then once I got a really good employee from Indeed, I was able to, do you have anybody that you used to work with that you really, really enjoyed? And actually the person that is going to be transitioning from a manager role into that employee experience manager role, she literally, um, she just walked into the boutique one day and she was shopping. I knew who she was because two of my estheticians used to work under her and always spoke really highly of her. Wow. And, and so it was just sort of, you know, a blessing. She just walked in and we started chatting and I just instantly liked her. And then a couple of weeks later I said, you know, cause that's when I was getting ready to open the second location. And I just reached out to her and I said, I don't know if you're interested because she was working at a, um, a bigger chain. She was a manager of a bigger chain. Mm -hmm. I was able to maybe not offer her some of the same benefits that the, the chain was able to afford at that point, but, but sort of the working environment was maybe more of what she was looking for. And so it just, it worked out perfectly. I love it when people like that, just they're attracted to you. And then that whole network of insiders Mm -hmm. right, so when you have a certain skill set out in your community and everyone knows where everyone falls on the ranking of that skill set, you definitely, there's a kinship there between those of you that you know are on the same plane. And then why wouldn't you want to work with people that have the same high standards, you know, the same level of care, the same level of professionalism is all there. It really reduces the drama and it really creates this sense of kinship amongst each other. That's Absolutely. super cool. Yeah. And mm -hmm. in our area, and I'm sure that's the same in, in other areas, but in our particular field, everybody sort of knows a little bit about the different companies and sort of the reputation they have towards their employees. And the other thing that was important for me was to build that reputation, not just my reputation with the clients, but my reputation to other people that were working in the spa industry in my area, because I felt that would attract the kind of people that I was looking for. So tell me about what are you looking for in a front desk person? Because your spa is unique. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that people who are coming to your spa they are probably a little bit nervous, looking for a high level of trust, looking for some empathy. And um, I think there would be some nervousness in terms of body image. Absolutely. So when you have a new person that's coming to your spa and that first moment of truth, like I like to tell the story all the time, right? You're the first moment of truth for any of your spas, Nikki. It's really not you. It's the front desk person that happens to be there the day they take the call to book the appointment or the day that they show up for their very first appointment. So what are you looking for in terms of attributes with those front desk team members? That's been, um, that's been an interesting journey because to me, it is so important for the client to instantly feel at home because exactly what you said, they're, they're nervous, feel really uncomfortable. You know, like you're walking into somebody's home, a comfortable home, um, with still being professional in a spa environment, but I want that person to really exude, I'm here, I got your back, you're going to get through this. And we've even had conversations with front desk where, you know, feel free to be like, girl, I know you were nervous, trust me, I've done this too, you're going to get through it. You know, really be genuine and authentic 
but also being efficiency and the structure that needs to happen throughout that whole booking process because we do see such a high volume of clients. We see about 2,000 clients a month. Um, So really keeping that day-to-day structure down and um, being able to know that client's about running about 10 minutes late, we're going to have to move things around. So really somebody who can work quickly on their feet and problem solve is also so important. So finding that balance has definitely been a challenge for me because it, it tends to be people are either one way or the other. They're going to either you know, remember your name as soon as you walk in and that your kid had a baseball game last week and he won and, you know, have that really cozy, comfortable experience, but maybe not so be good, not being so good on the the back end, right? Um, The the scheduling and and the sort of the logistical side of of the job. Um, So, and then, you know, vice versa. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it's, it's, it's a balancing act really. Yeah. Tough to find that harmony with that first moment of truth person that comes in. They're so important in any business and it's, it's a delicate situation and service that you're providing. So it's almost like added pressure that those front desk people are really a wonderful extension of you and your brand and what you're trying to create here. So tell me with 2000 clients a month being served, this high level of service, it's a delicate atmosphere that you're welcoming people into, how do you train your team? Uh, One thing that I've done since the very beginning is I am very hands-on literally with my estheticians. So when I hire a new esthetician, I want to show them exactly what I have been able to do in the treatment room with our specific technique that we use, um, how you talk to the client, the conversations that you have with the client, really um, keeping that client at ease. Um, And it's funny you mentioned the word empathy in some point here uh, Mm -hmm. because that's something that I really focus on as well. I remind the estheticians that, Um, they need to constantly throughout the entire service, remember what it's like to be the client. Right. That's so important. And, um, and because on that so much, I feel like I've, I've probably, well, I don't feel like, I know I haven't focused on the training of the front desk staff as much as I, as I could have because it's been so important for me to have that esthetician connection um, because that's what creates that consistency of client experience. And that's been my focus. And really my Achilles heel has been training the front desk staff appropriately because that's just not my cup of tea. It's not, I never to, to do that job. So our director of operations, she trains the front desk staff and I train estheticians. I I stay in my lane yeah, and and they will let me know if I'm getting out of my lane. If I go near the front desk and I say, you know, maybe we could try it this way. They're quick to shut me down. (laughs) That's great that they know where your time is best spent and that you're open to that feedback too. And Mm -hmm. um, that you can kind of joke around with it for a little bit too. So now that you have this, you've got this new, layers of executive team members that are coming in. What are you foreseeing in terms of changes for you, the CEO, now that you've stacked up this, this executive team around you? Um, I think just in general, a clarity that I have not been able to have since probably year one, Mm -hmm. Um, because we, we grow, grew so quickly. um, It always just felt like I was putting out fires And with this new corporate structure, it almost feels like the clouds have parted. I can see what my business is and what parts that I personally want to grow and what I'm passionate about. I get to take the things that I'm not passionate about and give them to somebody else to do. I'm passionate about working with the estheticians and continuing ongoing education with them. Mm -hmm. Um, And also, I I do still love working with my clients. I do see clients three mornings a week. So I want to keep that there. It is manageable for me, and I I actually do enjoy it. Um, And then creating other personal development for women and, and helping women find other ways to become independent. I haven't really scratch the surface of that, but I know it's something that excites me and drives me. And 
by having this new corporate structure and delegating, I'll be able to spend more time on that and really figure out what that is. Yes, you're creating some white space, yes, which is so valuable to you. And you will be able to have some more creative think time about where else would you like to have an impact? And I'm sure without even knowing it, you're role modeling that for so many women in your area mm-hmm. just by doing what you're doing, Nikki. People are watching you. People are seeing, hey, wow, you know, she can do that. Maybe I can do that. And um, it's a wonderful place to be when you know that your everyday work, you already feel it's worthwhile and how it's impacting others around you. That's super cool. So tell me about your communication plan. So you have a very large team. The team is growing. You're Mm -hmm. always hiring. You're always onboarding. You are really leaning into the idea of providing continual training opportunities for your team members. How are you communicating with them? How are you communicating with them now versus before? If you ask probably any of my staff members, they would probably tell you that is something I've not been great at. Mm-hmm. I have I tend to be I'm in my when I'm in my office, the door is open. Come in, sit down, tell me your life story. It's been very kind of, you know, this casual, mm-hmm. comfortable environment. And I've loved that. I've loved that everybody yep. feels that they can do that but I'm not productive. I can't grow the business or things for the employees if I continue to be in that role. Um, So one thing that we have incorporated, it was an app that we had used before called Wonderlist. um, And we've actually, we've, continue to use it and it's working really well. We might look into Slack. I know a lot of people have mentioned that before, but it was sort of like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it's really working well. Um, Mm -hmm. And so we did some things like we put the front desk manual um, broken down into categories on Wonderlist so that anybody in the front desk can view that topic before they ask a question. Um, and then oh, that's cool. what they can do is if they still have a question, there's another list called questions for Crystal, and that is the director of operations. Mm. So she can go through and she can view the questions, answer them there, so that any other team member can also see the, the answers to those questions. So that's really streamlined. We also have a lot of um, other topics within that that app um, that I'm able to communicate with both the director of operations each one of my estheticians with the estheticians I've been able to update them on things like their quarterly goals meeting updates that type of thing we also uh, the director of operations has started doing one-on-one meetings every week with Mm -hmm. all front desk staff nice I am doing quarterly meetings with Mm -hmm. the estheticians and then when the the employee experience manager on board after her maternity leave, she is going to also have a scheduled meeting times with everybody so that they know they can get updated on everything like how much PTO do you have left? She's also going to give them information like uh, if they've got any five-star Yelp reviews, yeah. good news, just sort of a one-on-one. So she, she's going to be more of an extension of me. Mm-hmm. She, She's very good at kind of doing the feel good supportive role. Um, and I need to be able to delegate some of that. Absolutely. That, the more you can delegate out your team in the right way to the right people, mm-hmm. the more white space that creates for you. I love the idea that you're building these self-sufficient teams by using Wonderlist as a tool. Mm-hmm. I am such a huge fan of serve up the information to your team. So if they have a question, they can go find it first and take action, move forward. If they need extra help, they can come and ask for it, but at least they're taking it upon themselves to move forward. And the whole idea of you creating these drum beats within your organization, because I often wondered about you, Nikki, about whether you do like like drop-ins, like you just decide I'm going to get in the car and I'm going to go to location number two today and just do like a drop-in surprise visit how much time are you spending between driving in between all these locations? Actually, now I don't, I don't really need to do as much. I usually spend most of my time at the original location because it's mm-hmm. twice the size with twice the employees, twice the clients. Manager at the second location since before day one, really. 
it, it really runs very smoothly by itself. Mm-hmm. So I just go as needed. It wasn't like that in the beginning. In the, yeah. in the beginning, I was there twice a week with clients. Mm-hmm. And then I was also there once a week, uh, just sort of overseeing things. But that was for the first year. And then as I felt more comfortable, then I started slowly stepping away from it. So. And they appreciate that too. I'm sure they appreciate your, you know, those signs of approval that you don't need to be there overlooking everything they're doing every day. And it really empowers them to be, you know, to work within their own decision spaces and cohesively work as a team and just drive the business forward, making sure all your standards and procedures are being followed. And they're just a great extension of your brand. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I do know that there are some things, there are a lot of things that have fallen through the crack, cracks because of um, my, not being at the second location as much, but I know moving forward, I've got a plan in place to take care of those things. And that feels really good. And it's that whole learn from experience, Mm -hmm. right? We stop, we take a moment, we reflect what worked well, what didn't work well. What were the fires that I kept having to put out? What was keeping me up at night throughout that second location startup? Those are those kind of things that will really give you the confidence to be able to do that. And before I let you go, Nikki, I would love if you would share with the other women CEOs that are tuning in today who may also go through a period of time where they're second guessing themselves and some of the decisions that they've made in their business and second guessing whether they really want to keep moving forward with this business. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe they want to step aside. Maybe they want to sell it. Maybe they just want to um, go on a sabbatical, whatever it is. If they've got some mindset issues where they're starting to really stop and reflect about why am I not as in love or as in love with my business as I was originally, can you share some insight? Well, that's such a good question. I feel like there's so many different, (laughs) there's so many different answers to that. I think one of them for me, this hits home right now is, Um, I I was feeling like that for a while and now that I know that I have systems and people in place to give me that white space, it's almost now I feel like I can have the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. I can have the business, I can create the impact for women in my community, but I can also have the sanity and I can have the time of way. It just, it creates that space. Um, So I would say definitely taking the time to focus on sort of the back end or the the things that are really, you know, kind of keeping you up at night and just saying, I've got to get those under control. I've got to tackle them. We all have them. But once they're tackled, the freedom that comes behind that is really powerful. And isn't that really why you wanted to be a business owner in the first place? (laughs) You You wanted a life by design. Absolutely. And when you can start to feel that your dream and your vision for what your life is going to look like as a business owner really is starting to play out, it's such a, it's such a joyful, a joyful feeling to have. So congratulations to you, Nikki, on all your success. We are so mm-hmm. excited to be here along the journey with you to watch you put in those systems within your operations that are really, really helping you live that life by design. You know, the past few months have really, really changed everything. And it was um, really the first time I invested in myself um, because I knew something had to change. So I I have to say, I've learned so much just in the past three months Mm -hmm. um, that it's just changed. It's just opened up so many more windows for me that I didn't even know were there. So thank you. Hey, we're so proud of you. Thank you. Nikki and her team use the latest tools with online booking, a guest membership rewards program, gorgeous design, the best tools and technology, qualified estheticians, and a great website that makes it easier for any new guest to decide to come in for a treatment. However, the basic principles of client care are what truly leads Nikki and her team every day. Her front desk staff are critical in providing that empathetic first moment of truth, followed by the confidence that they get when they visit their esthetician. Nikki and her team know 
that self-care is often the first thing that a woman will sacrifice in order to provide for her family. So when she does decide to book an appointment, they're there, ready to welcome her, make her feel at ease, and ensure her that top-notch professionals are taking care of her. You know, you simply can't care for over 2,000 clients a month and plan to welcome even more without solid systems in place, including ensuring continuity of her standards across all of the locations and knowing what she's looking for when she's choosing Right Fit team members. You know, leadership can be exciting, challenging, and lonely at times. So don't go it alone. Let me help you create the team and the leadership structure that you've been craving. So until next time, remember, if you have a dream, you need a team. So let's get stacking yours today.